Same thing with my appliances. I never buy super trendy appliances. No, that's not true. That's not true at all. I bought a black hood. See, I, my advice is take it or leave it. <laughs> okay, so I break pretty much every single one of my own rules. Oh, I, yeah, I pretty much break every one of them. So take them with a grain of salt. They're here to be fun. I think they'll make you a little bit of money in the long run and yeah. So, hi, welcome to the house of Valentina. I'm Valentina and today we are talking about how to make your home look more expensive. I run a real estate and design business called House of Valentina. So we have a team of realtors and a team of designers. We are helping families buy, sell, renovate, and decorate. And the great thing about it is that we like to help out our clients. If they are working with a tight budget, as most of us are, being able to help them save money is huge. We love being able to help them in that way. I thought about this video for quite some time. I wasn't sure whether to put it out because I'm like, gosh, you know, I don't know. It seems kind of weird to tell people that we're gonna to try to make your house look more expensive. It makes sense if you're working in real estate, but if you are designing your home as well, these tips can be really helpful because they can save you money, especially in the long run, but it can also help you to have a really great quality of life inside your home and to really make your dollar stretch. I grew up in a house where my mom was very frugal and I grew up always cutting coupons and trying to make every bit stretch. So this has been years of practice and always trying to get the most from my money. So I hope that these tips will be very helpful for you. Let's just dive straight in. Tip number one is not the most popular, but cleaning up your house will definitely make your space feel more expensive. It does not matter if you have spent $1 or $10,000 on your sofa, if it is covered in stuff, and there's papers everywhere and the house is just a complete and absolute wreck. It doesn't matter how much money you spent on it, nobody knows because they can't see it. So cleaning up the house, getting down, getting baseboards, cleaning mirrors, and just putting away all the clutter will instantaneously give you a definite lift in your home. Other than the fact that it costs you some elbow grease, you can definitely save some money this way and it's a very cost-effective way to make your home look instantaneously more expensive. Tip number two is to mind the scale of your furniture. What that means is that if you have a, a room, let's say you've got a 12 by 12 and you have a sofa that consumes 12 by 12, you can't even get in the room. I know that sounds extreme, but a lot of times people are moving from one place to another and they bring furniture with them and they'll shove their big pieces into a room that it really doesn't fit into. And that really makes the space feel really tight. It makes it feel like no one can even get into it. You have to turn sideways to scoot through. And it's these kinds of things that make a house feel less expensive and they're pretty easy fixes. This is not the only time that I've broken all the rules that I'm about to tell you, but um, I broke my own rule when I bought a sofa that I was like, oh, I love this sofa. This is what I'm gonna order for the living room. I didn't measure very well. And so it ended up looking like dollhouse furniture in the room. It's just too low, but it was perfect for my sunroom where the ceiling is a little bit lower. So you really have to think through the scale, not just the width and the depth, but also the height of a room. I ordered taller pieces for that room and it just feels so much, it just feels like it's so much more important in proportion to the way it should be. Um, another thing that I see a lot of times where people have like really, really tiny artwork or like really big artwork and it just feels out of scale or I know I'm gonna totally rag on the boys here because I know it's stereotyping, but it typically is the boys who want a gigantic TV. And when you walk in the room and all you see is TV, to some, I realize that that is like the motherland that's as good as it gets. It's heaven on earth, but it also makes the room feel like everything else is very dwarfed and it doesn't feel very high end. It doesn't feel as though a designer has been there and mindfully created a space that was, you know, hopefully put together and measured. <laughs> Tip number three is to avoid unfinished or DIY designs. Now, like I said in the last one, I'm breaking all my rules. I DIY a lot of things in my house, but I don't DIY everything. I know the things that I'm able to do. I can paint in my house 
and I can change light bulbs. <laughs> I can paint chandeliers and I can paint my own furniture, but I can't DIY everything. And so I really hate it when I walk into a house with a buyer and they're like, ugh, DIY special. And what that says to them is that they're gonna have to redo every single thing in that house. And if they don't care that you spent 50 hours creating you know, this masterful mosaic on the floor if the, the grout is all wrong and everything's a mess and nothing is straight. They don't care how many hours you put into it. They're gonna have to rip it up and fix it and really make sure that you really have the skill set to do it. Otherwise, hire it out or wait until you can save enough money to hire someone that can really help you. Tip number four is to take care of what you have. And I think this is something that a lot of us overlook because we have kids, we have dogs, It's life is busy. And sometimes the furniture gets a tear in it and sometimes it gets worn out. And sometimes we didn't buy that great of a quality piece to start with and the threads are coming out and we just haven't taken care of what we have. The cheapest way to have an expensive looking home is to take care of what you already have. That that you already have, it's yours. It's, it was free at this point. So take care of what you have, clean it, um, take the covers off if you can and wash them. Um, put a blanket over those tears until you're able to repair it. You can't do it right away, but taking care of those things will really um, give you longevity in them. And anytime you get longevity in an item, it's always more budget friendly. Tip number five is to buy real materials. Um, fake materials are getting better and better these days, but it's very difficult to fake certain woods. It's very difficult to fake certain furs or materials. I just try to, I generally try to avoid fakes anytime that I can. I think fake marble is another one. I also have quartz countertops, which I think is a great substitute. So again, I'm breaking my own rule here. You're gonna notice that a lot in this video. Um, I, might, I bought quartz for my kitchen and I absolutely love it. It behaves like granite, but it looks like marble and it is a great, great substitute. However, there are a lot of really bad fake marbles out there. For mica, that just looks very plasticky. It doesn't, it doesn't hold up very well. In the end, it's always cheaper to buy better quality that will last than to have to replace it super fast. Whenever you can, invest in the highest quality that you can afford. Tip number six is to invest in finishes. I have found, oh, myself included, I really struggled with this because I was spending all this money on my kitchen and I was like, ouch, like spending $500 on a faucet or more, that's painful. Who wants to spend that kind of money? And not everybody even has that kind of money. And I, I had to be smart about it because I didn't necessarily have the money to spend on it. So what I did is I got on Amazon. I found out that Wayfair gives out great discounts on a lot of these items. And I found the Brizo faucet that was so expensive. I found it on sale on Amazon. It was a lot cheaper there than anywhere else I could find it. So there are ways to get those high-end finishes on a budget. But anytime that you invest in a faucet that's heavier, not only will it last longer, but it feels really good in your hand and it gives that feeling of, it's just, it gives a very elevated feel to the entire space to have that high-end piece in there. The same thing for your lighting. You can also purchase a very high-end piece that you find on sale as well. And that's another great way to get around it. Check out your outlet stores. Of course, beware, you don't wanna buy something that's broken or chipped or looks like it's been damaged, but I have found a lot of great things that have been at the outlet stores and I'm able to save a lot of money. For tip number seven, I always suggest investing in one or two high quality pieces for a space. It will elevate the entire feel of a room. In my living room, I actually have Ikea pieces in there and I intend to eventually take out the Ikea pieces in my living room, but they feel more elevated for sure, sitting next to a higher end sofa. And that's kind of a little trick that I will play on the eye where you don't really see those Ikea pieces so much because your eye really sees those big pieces. Tip number eight is to learn what quality looks like. I was always raised that we don't go to the fancy stores and we don't go to those fancy restaurants because we can't afford them. For a long time, I would just choose, you know, whatever I saw that I liked instead of really thinking through my purchases. And I 
have sold an awful lot of things and I have sold everything I owned um, three times, actually four times. Um, <laughs> so maybe in the end it was better. <laughs> Because a lot of those things I probably wouldn't want now anyways, but going to those high-end stores really taught me a lot and going to those higher-end restaurants and the hotels and just really looking at things. Just really educate yourself on what a quality scarf looks like. What does a quality sofa look like? That way, even though you may not be able to purchase everything from that store, it will teach you to have a really good eye for what you're looking for. My tip number nine is to avoid cheap, and I do use air quotes for that, cheap as in quality, um, cheap pillows, bedding, and throws. Let me just show you for a minute. I found this really beautiful velvet pillow. It was on sale at Pottery Barn, and I just absolutely love this. It has this really great finish on it. You see how it's got this extra detail on it? The, the fabric is really soft and it feels really luxurious. It also has a down insert so I can fluff and <laughs> chop it. And I have control over the way that this looks. When you buy lower end pieces that are filled with fiber fill and they don't fluff like this, you really don't get a lot of control over how it looks sitting on the sofa or on the bed. So I always suggest doing a down insert if you aren't allergic to them. I know sometimes you don't have a choice, but you can also find a good fake that feels like down. Um, but I really suggest that there's a lot of places that you can buy down inserts, but I really like the Pottery Barn ones. I think they're a good mid-range price and they have this amazing feature where you can zip them and switch out the insert. So this is a great way if it's spring and I'm no longer in the mood for velvet necessarily, I just switch the cover and this saves me from having to buy a whole new pillow. The other pillow I have from Pottery Barn has this beautiful embroidery on it. I mean, how gorgeous is this? It's in classic colors, so I know that it's not gonna be something that comes and goes out of my house, but it has this unique pattern that's embroidered onto this, and it is stunning. This typically would cost a ton of money. These are on sale right now. I think they're around $30 for a pillow, so it is a good price. And this is the kind of pillow that will last. The seams are really nice, and again, it's got that great zipper. And so I know that you can definitely do a higher end fabric and you can look places like Etsy to save money on those fabrics. And I know some people are really funny about having that very high end stuffed feel and that's fine if that's your thing. I just prefer these because we actually sit with these pillows and we actually use them and this enables me to give them a good fluff and they just wear really, really well. My mom's gonna hate me for number 10 and I am somewhat uh, negating this advice by how my house looks in the background because I have a lot of things, but avoid tchotchkes. If you are trying to go for a higher end look, try going with larger items and fewer of them. Really nice, big coffee table books, larger vases. The reason why is if you see a vase that's this big and you see a vase this big, the truth of the matter is that you could spend way more on that tiny little vase that was handmade by an artisan living up in some remote mountain in Nepal. Or <laughs> you could buy the big one at Target and it may end up not costing you as much, but it has a higher end feel because it, it fills the space and there's less movement in the room and it generally gives off a more high-end vibe. And so it doesn't have to cost you a lot more money, but it will look like it did. I hope these tips and tricks will be something that will help you feel encouraged as you pull your home together, whether you're getting ready to have it staged to sell or if you're still building your home. I hope these tips and tricks will encourage you that having a, a high-end feel to your home does not have to break the bank. And in fact, it's a lot of fun. It's an adventure to shop around and to be selective about what you actually spend your hard-earned money on and to really create a curated home that really is you. And I think that's the most adventurous thing is to create a home that really feels like yourself and it feels like the most elevated version of you. And I think that that's a lot of fun. And I hope that you do too. Write me a note down in the comment, tell me which one is your favorite. And also, if you've got a tip to share, I know everybody loves to hear what everybody else does to save money and to get that high-end look. So 
definitely share for us your tips and tricks down in the comment section. If you haven't hit subscribe already, we hope that you will and that you'll give us a good thumbs up. You can also visit us as always at houseofvalentita.com. We like to post more inspiration there and you can find us on Pinterest for all the pictures that were used in this video today. And you can also visit us at Instagram. We have two accounts. I have Valentina Fussell, which is my personal account, and the House of Valentina, which is where I run my real estate and design business. We do actually help our clients buy and sell homes, and we also help them renovate them and decorate them. So I'm very lucky to have an amazing team that we get to be able to do this for so many families here in the Atlanta area. And we'd love to be able to help you if you are in need of one of those services. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I know I always love getting to spend time with you guys and I will see you very soon. Bye. I've done fake marble where you take the contact paper and you put it on a table and I couldn't, I couldn't give those tables away <laughs> when we left Denmark. Nobody wanted them. They just People didn't like the fake marble look. They just didn't like it. So they're sitting.